I'm mm-hmm. filling it now. <laughs> Whiskey Nine Yankee, seven November golf, Robert. Welcome to the show where we eat hot wings and talk to veterans about their transition and their VA disability journey. Today we have James Daniels, a Marine Corps veteran and the cameraman behind Salary Transparent Streets, who advocates for pay transparency in the workplace. James, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. All right. So how are you around spicy wings or spicy food in general? What does that look uh, like for you? I think that my tolerance level is pretty high, so I should be good up until probably about wing eight. Yeah, but uh, we're going to find out. Yeah, we're gonna find definitely out. not a quitter. So This is like my sixth or seventh time doing it, and I'll say every time I do it, it's like the first time, which is miserable. So it Sounds like a good time, man. <laughs> All right. With the first question, what we'll do is I'll ask, or we'll eat a wing, and then I'll ask a question. All right. I'll so you are starting right. from left to right. I'm okay. going from right to left. Let's go. All right. I think so. The part, this part is critical. So hopefully, well, cheers to uh, where we're about to go. Are you a whole wing kind of dude? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. All right. So question number one, James. What was your background in the Marine Corps? What did you do? How many years did you serve? Just the whole full nine on your Marine Corps experience. Awesome. Um, so my first four years, I served a total of nine years. Mm-hmm. Um, eight years active duty, and then I did a year in the reserves. My first four years, I did. Um, I was a diesel engine technician, so pretty much I worked on everything wheels from LBSRs to Humvees, Mat Bs. Um, loved it. Was stationed yeah. at Kepler Lejeune, Second Mar Div, Ura. Uh, <laughs> and then my second four years, I did psychological operations and information operations plan uh, for Makayak, the Marine Corps Information Operations Command or Center. Center, yeah. yeah. Um, and then in the reserves, I went back to Moody T Mechanic because that's where they pushed me. I was with, um, I didn't even know you did reserves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. after I got out September, 2018, um, I was still kind of lost in my journey. Didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I loved the Marine Corps. We go through all of the BS, you know, only to still <laughs> love it, you know? Yeah. Um, so decided to go ahead and kick it into the reserves to see what that was like. Also, because. I know being on the active duty side, we have our views of the reserves, you know, so I wanted to see what their views of active duty was. Um, it was exactly what I was expecting by all means. But at the same time, I do have to give them their props because uh, the reserves isn't it's not made for everybody by all means. Uh, yeah. You still have your full time job or full time school or whatever it is that you're doing on the outside, but then you're expected to drop that to do full-time Marine Corps for that weekend or that four days, whatever the case might be. And that sounds a lot easier than what it is, but like when you're battling, you know, the personal stuff on the civilian side, uh, like work, family, stress, all of those things. And then you go, well, now I have to kind of forget about this for this weekend so that I can focus on Marine Corps stuff. It's kind of hard to make that transition on a constant basis. I have so many reservist jokes. Um, but <laughs> oh, by all I'll, means, I'll keep let, them let them out. Cause my, all right. I, I didn't hold back while I was in the reserves. <laughs> I can tell you that. All right. Wing number two. I'm going right to left here. Okay. So the first wing, sorry, was a hot one classic at 1600 Scoville, which is nothing. Yeah. This one's called a Curry Verde at 6000 Scoville. So it's increasing, but still, it's just a good wing. Okay. Well, it's good at. This one's more sweeter. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It still has a bite, but it's nothing. Um, this is a good wing. You know, I can totally order 12 of these. Oh, yeah. So question two, what was your plan when you left the Marine Corps? And I know we already hit the reserves, but what did you do for work? Did you drop hop around? What does that look like? And and feel free to talk about the pay transparency stuff involved with that because veterans, you know, new veterans get shafted more than anyone, in my personal opinion. No, no, you're definitely correct. Um. As far as what I did when I got out, my original plan was uh, work for a bit because that's all I knew. I entered the Marine Corps at the age of 17, so I didn't really have a job prior to that, you know. Um, But I felt with my Marine Corps experience, that would get me pretty far. So I decided I wanted to try out a few things. Um, I was really interested into buying a house, so I decided to sell windows and kitchens and roofs. Um, 
my mindset behind that was I did psychological operations. So I was like, I know how to talk to people. I know how to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. That's easy. Um, well, I wasn't expecting is uh, the jump in pay from leaving the Marine Corps to the regular civilian side. So, you know, you got your steady, steady paycheck. You know exactly how much you get in, exactly what's coming out and what's going where when you're inside. On the outside, it's not the same, especially trying to figure out your finances. Because yeah. for me coming up through the Marine Corps, I was like, oh, I'm getting promoted to corporal. This is my biggest pay jump, you know, like a grand or so, you know, so I know where that money's going to go. But I didn't know how much I needed to earn in order to uh, maintain my lifestyle, my lifestyle outside of the Marine Corps. So thinking of housing, um, clothing, you know, you know, lunch, stuff like that, that you typically just get through the Marine Corps. Um, so so windows and doors, uh, that was $200 every two weeks plus commission. That sounds great, except for you don't get your commission until that project is no longer not only closed, but finished. So therefore it may take it's a lot of leg work up front. Correct. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, like we would go into people's houses with the, giving them the expectation, Hey, I'm here to give you a free estimate. Mm -hmm. But by the time I leave that house, I'm going to try to pitch to you that you need to buy today. And sounds very immoral, you know, and that's the way that it felt. I felt disgusting, you know, going into people's houses going, yeah, this is a free estimate for windows. You should buy them today though. Like really you should buy them today. And you can't leave that house until you've called your manager three, four times, you know, and they finally go, okay, yeah, you can leave. Those three, four calls is going to be, oh, well, tell me whatever you can to make them think that I'm actually talking you down. But at the end of the day, it was, I was building a price for the windows. They gave me a baseline. They're like, whatever's over this baseline, that's part of your commission. So your goal then is, well, I want to sell these windows for double so that I can make 50% of my commission. Just immoral though. Um, then from there, uh, moved on to car sales. Mm -hmm. I worked at a Ford dealership in Alexandria. Uh, it wasn't too bad, honestly, selling cars more I was savvy with because I worked on cars, but it was still the immoral piece to it. You know, I'm trying to sell you something just so that I can make a living. Um, and there was a lot of politics and bureaucracy in the dealership that I just wasn't fond of. Um, we were in the day after Christmas at six o'clock nobody showed up until like maybe 12 and i think it was like one person because people don't car shop the day after christmas yeah um there i was making roughly about the same i think a little bit more but it was still you know very minimum salary and then whatever you make as far as commission um from there i ended up connecting with some guy his name was anthony something i remember he was this small business owner and he reached out because he saw my resume somewhere um, traveling back or going back a little bit, leaving the Marine Corps, I was never taught like, Hey, this is how you build a resume, or this is how you translate your military skills into civilian skills. So I think that that, um, played a role in like the, why I wasn't getting jobs as frequently, but I did job hop as often as I possibly could. And Anthony happened to see my resume. He saw that I was military experienced. He was like, I know military jargon. So like, I'll bring you in. Brought me into the Pentagon, making seventy thousand dollars a year doing executive assistance work for um, defense continuity and missing insurance, working under the uh, deputy assistant secretary of defense. Super cool. Uh, was in the Pentagon every day. Loved it. It was a new experience. Put me around a lot of people that I never would have come in contact with other than that. Um, but it just wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and then eventually ended up making my way into Booz Allen working back at Bakai, but on the contractor side. And I think I was making 75,000. Yeah. Uh, did that for nine months, job popped again, went to uh, the Department of Homeland Security doing, what was it? It was like, it was like crisis planning, but it was during COVID. So our whole crisis team was focused on COVID. And pretty much all we did was do reports up to higher ups in the uh, in DHS about what our COVID number looked like, mm -hmm. uh, what teams were out, uh, <clears throat> where they were out, and then like what supplies and stuff they needed. And I was making 85000 then. And the last jump I did was over to 1st IO Command, where you currently are. Um, and I was making hundred and five to start. But then once we did the contract change, then I left making 112000 Okay, nice. Yeah. So you job hopped a lot. Yeah, right? yeah. And I mean, like, the, the good thing is, is that I have my uh, 
clearance. So like that helped weasel me back into the system yeah. so that I can make 112. Oh yeah. And one thing I do want to hit on um, when it comes to <clears throat> fuck, what the fuck was I gonna say? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'll edit all that shit out. <clears throat> so one thing I do want to hit on is the pay for military because everyone says military pay is low and they're right military pay is low but there's a huge benefits package that no one tells you about correct right and yeah. so it's kind of like you know i do a joint channel with veterans info tap and he describes it like this if you work at a job and they give you stock options as a part of your salary or whatever yeah. Once you left that job, you wouldn't leave your stock options and say, ah, you can have those back. Correct. Right? You yeah. would cash them out or I don't know how that stuff works. You would do something. <laughs> right. Same thing with the military life is everyone fails to realize there's a huge benefits package. I'm not talking about healthcare while you're in or all that stuff. I'm talking about VA benefits, which is a part of that contract that you signed. So um, that is a huge piece of military pay that no one yeah, accounts for. You honestly. know, everyone will say E4 pay is low, this is low, that's low, and it is, but there's a whole package that's, of that's hidden that people don't really find out until they get out. And so now my next question to you, well, let's do a wing first. <laughs> wing number three, this one is the Krabby Shack, which is zesty lemon pepper at 15,000, 15, I love lemon pepper. All right, so question number three, what is your VA rating, if you don't mind sharing? And then really, what was your journey from leaving the Marine Corps to being rated by the VA? Did you do it on your own? Did you use a VSO? You know, what what, what did that whole process look like for you specifically? Um, that one's good. So my rating, I, I believe it's currently 90 or... or Something like that, like 90 or, or above, but not 100. It's rounded at 90. Yeah, it's yeah. rounded at okay. 90. Um, my process was long, I can tell you that. And that's because um, prior to getting out, like I didn't do, I can, I'll be honest, I didn't do the things that I was supposed to prior to getting out to make the process a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, like during your PHA, that, that final physical and everything, they're like, oh, make sure that you tell them everything that's going on because this really matters for your rate. Um, at that time, like I honestly just wasn't focused on them. And like, you know what our schedule was like, we was just always doing something. Yeah. So I was like, I just need to do this so that I can finish this step so I can go back to doing what I'm doing. You know, I was eight years in the Marine Corps. I was like focused on just getting my stuff done so that I can be done with it, you know? Um, but then after I got out and I like started looking into it a little bit more, I found out that they had the website to where you can initiate your own claims. So I went through that process, um, everything from scheduling appointments with QTC or QTC, yeah. um, to like uploading my own documents. Uh, it wasn't too difficult just as long as you have access to everything. It is a lengthy process and at times it was difficult because I was in the office and they're like, Hey, you know, you need to go to this appointment, but they're calling me while I'm in the Pentagon. So I didn't have my phone, you know? Um, other than that though, the process was pretty easy as far as actually attending the appointments, um, and asking the, making sure that I asked the right questions while I was there. That was the most important thing, mm -hmm. uh, because it was one thing for me to go in and say, Hey, I'm having this issue and I'm having this issue. Versus me going in and saying, hey, I'm having this issue. Do you believe that this could be tied back to, you know, when I was in and I sprained my ankle? What, what led you to ask those questions specifically? Or was it just like by chance? No, uh, actually, I was talking with you. Not yeah. not even joking. Because, <laughs> like, uh, to be like fully transparent, like it was it was talking with you. And like when you told me to make sure that they that they that they have enough knowledge to be able to tie it back to my Marine Corps experience. That's when I started asking that question. Um, and that's when I think that things also started shifting because initially I was rated 70% and that was for like shoulders, back, um, and my ankles. Mm -hmm. Right. 
those are the easy ones. It's a lot easier for me to tell you, hey, my back hurts than to say, hey, I'm depressed, you know? And you can take an x-ray of your back, right? Correct. Yeah. So we did that whole process. They came back 70. Um, but then I was like, hey, like mentally, I don't feel like I'm where I should be, especially because of my experience in, in the Marine Corps. Um, so I took your advice, I refiled again, and they came back and it was like, yeah, like we can give you all of this, which I mean, like it was literally just anxiety and depression. Um, and that bumped me up another 20%. Mm -hmm. But the process itself wasn't too bad. I mean, especially because I went through the whole thing myself. I think it definitely would have been a lot easier. And I definitely would have um, made a lot more progress sooner if I would have went through a VSO. Uh, it's just that I kind of have like this little bit of me where I'm like, I just want to experiment and see. You know, <laughs> and it's doable. I just wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> we. I always recommend, you know, VSO is always my number one recommendation. My number two is the veteran does it themselves, but they still at least speak with the VSO because the VSO will have, they're, they're able to peek behind the curtain because they yeah. have certain access that you, we, that we don't have. But other than that, at the end of the day, you submit an evidence-based claim. That's yeah, what we correct. Want, yeah, right? yeah. All right. So moving on to wing number four. Now this sauce is called the Chico Ghost. Um, this is my favorite sauce on this on this plate here. It looks it's good. 36,500 Scoville, which still it doesn't get hot till about a hundred thousand. But um, this one is beautiful, dude. That's good. Beautiful. I love that wing. <laughs> okay, so transitioning away from the Marine Corps. What's it like being the cameraman? for salary transparent street which has millions of followers across multiple platforms yeah um and then a funny thing because you do work for your wife right your wife is in front of the camera does she like starve you if you don't do a good job <laughs> or like no she hates me every now and again though. <laughs> uh, all right she's she's like, i said point the camera at me this little shot caller you walk around <laughs> but um no it's actually pretty cool i mean Coming from psychological operations, you know how our stance on social yeah. media is. Um, but with that, like, I never was a TikTok fan before that. Um, I never was really big on social media. I, I used it as a means to communicate with people when I was away. Um, making a transition to now being uh, part of something, a movement. I mean, honestly, that's what it is. It's a movement. But being a part of this, it's like... It's definitely a lot different. Um, you feel the freedom by all means. And the times in which you're like constrained to brand messaging or, you know, events, stuff like that. It's not it's not that bad because I mean, at the end of the day, it's a way for us to connect with a lot of people who are kind of like minded um, and also help push forward something that's better for everybody else. You know, mm -hmm. and joining the Marine Corps, that's kind of like what I was looking for, you know, making a change, but then also doing something with people who are like-minded. Yeah. So it's kind of the same transition. It's just on a different platform now, you know, versus me putting on a uniform that's camo, I'm putting on a uniform with STS on it, you know, like, so it's, it's a lot smoother. Um, definitely wouldn't change it for anything. And I always suggest to people, like, if you have an idea, post it. Like, uh, that's what, you are actually what made me start the channel because I saw you and Hannah do your thing and I was like, I can do that. You, well, you can. And look a at you now. Different taste, but I can do that. And look at you now. Yeah. And that's because I meant like at the end of the day, social media is a way for us to is a means for us to connect to one another mm -hmm. and gain information. You should never stop learning, but at the same time, you should always teach people what you've already learned. We know a lot, so put it on social media, let people see it. Yeah. One thing I like about STS specifically is it's very mission driven. It's, you know, anyone can take their phone and make a TikTok, but STS is mission driven, mission first always, which is pay advocacy specifically for females, right? That's that's uh, the whole, and, well, and there's other audiences, but is that the mission? Yeah. Like, what is the mission of, so our, of STS? So the way that we like to look at it is, is our mission is primarily focused on employees as a whole. Mm -hmm. So whether you are a man, a woman, trans, you're, you're bi, disabled, like black, Just, white, purple, we don't care. Like our fair, thing is fair, yeah, fair, pay. fair pay for all. But at the same time, not even just 
pay. I know like our channel is called Salary Transparent Street, but like it's pay, it's it's your rights, it's you know, your benefits, it's options or or the ability to have equal employment. Like it's all of these things. Yeah. So like our videos are just one small part of what we do. Um the other things that go on behind the camera is like our push for legislation. You know, like we testified in support of uh, SB 125, uh, Maryland's pay transparency bill. And like that was just something that we did because we was like, this is a way to help the community. Mm -hmm. We're in the DMV area and like, yeah, we don't live or work in Maryland, but like people do. So we have to make sure that we're the voice for them as well. All right. Awesome. I love it. I'm a huge fan. I like it. Okay. Like, I'm a huge fan of the Civ. Every too. every time I see STS, I see Hannah. I put myself in your position. I'm like, I know James is there. He's right here where I'm at. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's right here where I'm at. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to number five. This is halfway through. This sauce is called Los Calientes. It's at forty nine thousand Scoville. This is also a good sauce. It's like a spicier classic. So I would also like put this on the scramble. Ooh. Okay. Really at seven, seven, eight, nine, and ten is when the game <laughs> just changes. <do> a bite. <laughs> the game changes. I'm, I'm gonna do what you do. Okay. I'm just warning you. I'm warning you. <laughs> I push myself a lot. <laughs> so I know you're you've been accustomed to the ship life in the Marine Corps, doing mm -hmm. muse and hanging out in the Navy and just being on a gigantic prison in the ocean. Exactly. What was ship life like? You know, I, I, I've only been on, so I was on ship for three or four months in total. I got really lucky. Every, yeah, every time I first... went on ship, I got to get off ship Yeah, to just support other stuff. So what was ship life like for you? Um, I'll be honest. Uh, the first one, 31st Mew, same thing. I was kind of like on ship for maybe three months, but like we was on and off, you know, mm -hmm. um, the actual time on ship isn't too bad. Like as long as you know people, honestly. You got to know everybody works in a child line. You got to know everybody that works in a supply locker. Like, swear to God, like, if, if you know these people, ship life will be fun. Uh, my second time on a Mew, uh, the 11th Mew, I think we were nine ship or nine months uh, on rotation. I was on and off ship uh, a little bit there, but, like, I spent a majority of my time on ship. I think probably about four months. And that's when we knew everybody. And that changed the whole game. Yeah. You know, the, the first Mew, you're in your rack. You know, Raz days, you're in your rack. Cleaning days, you're up cleaning. The second time, because you know everybody, oh, when they clean in the birthing area, guess where I'm in? <laughs> Sleep. Raz days, I'm in a supply locker getting free Red Bulls. Yeah. You know, so if you know, hey, if you know people. It's the, it's it's the little fun. wins. It's the yeah, small wins. It's the small wins. I mean, like, yeah, it sucks, but like. Is there anything from from your time on ship that really stands out as like a really funny moment or really like, dang, that sucks? Or like, is there anything that you can think of? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the two dudes that I was deployed with out of uh, out of California, Freddie Ali Aliano and Jose Araya. I hope they see this. I hope they see this. Uh, but me and Freddie... It was like super tight. All three of us, we was tight, but like, you know, like everybody, everybody in that, in that freeway group, somebody has to be the one that gets, gets picked on. Yeah. Orion was that one. <laughs> and, uh, I don't even know what we were talking about, but like one day we were just sitting in the birthing area of BS and watching movies and stuff. And this is going to sound terrible. Trust me. I'm not a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> this is, this will be good for the internet, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like me and Freddie, we just started going in on, on Araya. I don't know what it was. It was just that day was not his day. And then we started talking about his tattoos because he had like the traditional, you know, tribal tattoo mm -hmm. that everybody gets. And we started making fun of that. And then he started crying. Or he didn't start crying, sorry. He went into his rack, closed his curtains. So he said he was crying. Dude, and that back, ship life was hitting him, bro. Yeah, that became like the joke of the ship for like at least the at least two weeks. <laughs> Anytime he went into his rack, we're like, oh, he's going to go cry. You know, so. <laughs> but favorite moment. Um, but then like there was also other little moments. Like we used to go down to the well deck and we box and do jujitsu, you know. Mm -hmm. Like so it's like it's it's like the whole scheme of the Marine Corps, like everything sucks. 
but like those little moments. Those moments. Sense. Yeah. I do remember Araya slightly. Yeah. <laughs> Admin dude, if I could, yep. if I, that went psyop. And I remember Aliano um, just being goofy. Aliano was a my, goofy looking. He dude, was my man. boy, man. He's yeah. supposed to come out to uh, to Dubai with me. It was supposed to be all three of us, but he ended up not bringing his passport. Mm, so dummy. To, yeah, so you have to stay on ship that whole time. Big dummy. I think I think Araya or not Araya, Aliano does. He was streaming there. Yeah, he was man. streaming. Uh, it was like yeah. a Aztec gaming or something yeah, like that. Yeah, dude. Oh, I'll hit yeah. him up. Yeah, check him if out. If he's still streaming, I'll. I'll plug I think it. I still see him every now and again on Twitch. Um, I haven't seen him post that often though. Yeah. All right, moving on to the second oh, half. Okay, this is when face. things get real. So this one is called the Spicy Shark. This one here that has a cool graphic. Um, oh, pretty cool. It kind of bites you like a shark would. So let's get cheers. It. Okay, is that hot to you? It's a little spicy. Well, I'm sweating. I feel a little. My bit. whole core temperature just rose. <laughs> I could feel it. <laughs> I'm gonna get the water. This is it. This is where I start. This is your downfall. You're making me eat the whole dang wing. Okay. So I know you're a girl dad. Yeah, I'm also a girl dad. I got three girls. I three girls. Yeah, three girls. Yeah. I also have a son. I'm on kid number four. Which is crazy. Oh shit. Yeah. Bro, I know it's fine. That was a little spicy. <laughs> Okay, hold on. I'll ask you a question. This is... <laughs> Here we go. This is the start of it. Hmm. What is your thoughts on your girls joining the military, specifically the Marine Corps? Are you for it? Are you against it? What is your whole no and why? Um. So no, no. Just to start. And my reasoning behind it is, um, like I understand why people join the Marine Corps. Obviously, I did it, but. The Marine Corps at this point, I feel as though the Marine Corps has not put in effort to ensure that our transition to the civilian world is up to par with other branches, like the Air Force, for instance. Um, granted, um, I haven't been in the Air Force, but I know a lot of people who currently are in the Air Force and have served in the Air Force. Um, and just me asking about their experience, you know, us picking each other's brains, obviously, because when you know somebody else is in the military, mm -hmm. you always do the comparison, you know, um, and just speaking with them and like my knowledge of the Air Force, I'm like, that was definitely a better career choice. Um, but like, if you want to join the Marine Corps to drop bodies, obviously, that's this is this place you go, you know. Now, my reason behind not letting them join is because. It's not because like they're girls or anything like that. By no means is that the case. I knew some amazing uh, women Marines, you know, or female Marines, whatever you want to call them. Um, but um, I just don't think that, like, I'd, I'd rather them experience life in other ways first. You know, mm -hmm. like, I know in Europe, after college, kids take, you know, one or two years off or even before college, taking a year or two off. I'd love for them to do that. You know, go explore the world before you make a decision that could potentially, you know, steer you down a path that you can't deviate from. Um, and then, like, I know college isn't as big as it used to be, especially with prices now. Uh, so, like, them just going out and experiencing the world, traveling the world for two years and then coming back and being, oh, well. Now I want to be a doctor. I'd be perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Or, hey, I, I want to be a cop. Perfectly fine with that. I just prefer for them not to be in a line of duty, you know. But my mom signed off on me when I was 17 and gave me permission. So mm -hmm. if at the end of the day, one or all three of them come to me and say, hey, I'm joining the Marine Corps. Cool. I'll fully support your decision. I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> I'm the complete. I couldn't be more opposite. Um, I do want my kids to join the military, specifically the Marine Corps. If whatever they join, they join. Um, the reason why, now I, I totally agree with everything you said, but there were certain lessons in life that I think military members learn um, more than anyone else. Definitely. Oh, definitely. And I think the Marine Corps gets the brunt of that. I'm not saying the Marine Corps is better, although it is, but if you want to suck your life, you join the Marine Corps. Yeah. And that that does suck. 
but there's a good like the lesson i think the overall lesson i learned more than anything else is just learning how to just take the l take the loss and just go about your day you know yeah you get lifed out it's not the first time it's not gonna be the last time yeah you understand your mistake you know like all right i'm not gonna do that again and then you just truck forward that has helped among all the lessons i've ever learned in my life that has helped me more than anything that when just shit gets mm. thrown at you no you matter what it. it's <laughs> like all right now what yeah you know what's next no, instead that's... of like being in that depressive state which that also comes with it too i think the marine corps also enabled me <laughs> to just okay this is the suck we're gonna embrace it we're gonna live in the suck but my i'm going that way yeah. it gives you a direction right? correct i'm correct. going that way yeah personally i want my kids to be able to especially my girls to be able to just have that ability yeah because that is a that's a skill dude that i, I don't think a lot it, of people it really is though um i like to say my biggest lesson from the marine corps would be uh to appreciate all the little things yeah honestly mm -hmm. and i mean like and that's because like being in the middle of the goa for four months waiting for the next rise that's still two months away you know <laughs> you're like this sucks dick i have no snacks i have no smokes i have no chew like i have water and then whatever they serve me at the chow hall yeah. every now and again like, you know but dry like, chicken half cup yeah, rice like, at the end of the day like when you get back home you know you have your freedoms you're like okay well i was just in the in the thick of it you know three months ago and now i'm partying and living my best life you know so i think that that's what i've learned the most and i mean like it goes hand in hand with that because that when i'm in the shit, i'm like well i got better things yeah there's a price you pay for that though too yeah like your wear and tear on your bodies the need for va benefits so let's say it's a give take relationship and the marine corps the the dod will take theirs oh they take theirs that's for sure <laughs> they take theirs and sometimes they give it a little yeah. little, little too much but that's also why i tell all these old veterans that i come across you know i mean like we go everywhere and get tattoos and a lot of veterans are tattoo artists nowadays what i've mm -hmm. noticed and like i'll i'll be talking with one and i'm like hey like, what's your va rating oh well like, i got out uh, like 10 years ago so uh, I, I don't think I can or like yeah I, I'm supposed to be getting ready to do that and I'm like good do it because at the end of the day they took what they needed from you yeah it's that benefits package that yeah. no one talks no one about everybody, nobody you everybody want to leave your about. stock options at a company Correct. don't leave your stock options with the VA that's that's how I view the VA conversation yeah that's a great way to it's stock it options yeah it's stock options it's that you sign a contract you get some stock options take advantage of take it. advantage of it yeah all right, going to number seven, <clears throat> and this one is called that. Jalapeno Chico. Now we're in the hundred thousand, the hundred and three thousand Scoville. We're in it. Okay. All right. This was so. a drum though, so I don't know if I'm gonna eat the whole thing. All right, I, I'll, I'm gonna mirror you. I don't eat the okay. whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is your advice to any active duty cert service member that is getting out, whether that's a year out, six months out, or tomorrow? Just mm. what's your what's your general advice to them just for life? So we actually just did a panel with veterans for the break room on our channel salary transparent street. And during that time frame, I got asked the same question. I think my advice differed, but afterwards, that's why I'm glad we're doing this because I thought like the best advice that I could give to somebody that's getting out is to get a hobby, honestly. Like the, the military keeps you busy on purpose, mm -hmm. right? When you're busy, you can't think. No, no DUIs, no break. Right. When you get out, now you have free time and you can work and work and work, but like that does something to you mentally. Yeah. Get a hobby. So I have several. Uh, paint and draw, you know, create art. Um, I hike. I take my dog on hikes like, as often as I can. Mm -hmm. One, it's good for her, but then two, it's good for me mentally. Um, what else? I, I play the game. I mean, we play hell divers, you know, stuff like that. But like Dude, for democracy, yeah. But like, get a hobby because your time is now unoccupied, mm -hmm. and that makes us crazy. Um, I totally agree with that. That's my number one advice specifically. My, one of my hobbies is I like to dance. 
which is really weird for me because I never thought I would be a competitive dancer. All right. But now I compete in West Coast Swing, which is wild to even say. Um, and that whole story with how I met my wife and all that stuff. Um, but I totally agree because there's, when you do get out, there's white space. Well, what would, what we would call white space yeah. in the Marine Corps, you know, there's, you have free time and that makes you think of just, of dude, I went I'm down some dark holes, yeah. man, right? Like <laughs> of the wrong time. Am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, I have roots to the ground. Like we have kids. Am I doing, am I, am I setting up their future, my job? benefits all that stuff hits you all at once yeah it does especially like when you first get out too i mean mm -hmm. like that first i'll say like because I, I had a probably about like 50 50 something days of terminal you know so like that's your time to relax yeah by all means and a lot of us we see that as oh well now i could just double dip and i can work that's nice and all um great way to set yourself up but at the same time, that hobby, like you said, it takes up that white space. Mm -hmm. So like during that time frame when I was on terminal, the 50 something days, I was like, oh, I'm just going to hang out and like I'm going to work and then hang out. And like I never really did anything. And that's when I got crazy. But then when I started like venturing out a little bit more and I was like, oh, well, like I have white space. Let me not sit here and drink, drink my sorrows away. Yeah. You know, like that's not going to change what happened. So let me figure out something to do started painting again because it was a hobby that i had before the marine corps realized that i'm pretty decent at it so like let me expand on that i primarily did acrylics now i started working into watercolors and old painting charcoal you know like just trying to make yourself uh or trying to give yourself the time to relax your mind without doing something that's gonna mm -hmm. force you to use your mind yeah i feel like being task-based too keeps you from veering off the exactly. channel and then thinking about you know whatever it is you're gonna think about right. that's not good or i meant like create a social media page that's a great hobby this is takes YouTube, up a lot YouTube of time. takes up a lot of my time and it helps me stay sane at the same time i always talk about disability yeah and there's a there's tons of studies that basically conclude if you focus your time and energy on something um <clears throat> you start reflecting that right uh -huh. so what you put in is what you get out and if you're always focused on your mental health like a lot of it's trendy to be depressed right now yeah. which is really which weird is weird um but for me what i find is because i do youtube for va disability i focus on disability all oh, the time yeah and so whenever i'm not doing youtube and i'm with my kids i have to just completely completely forget about Civ Div and completely forget about my own benefits and just focus on with the kids the wife when i'm dancing whatever it is i'm doing yeah whatever's in front of you and i think veterans specifically are so focused on their benefits that that depression is exacerbated because that's all you think about correct yeah. and that hobby at least in my experience my hobby which is very task-based like dancing is very there's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, and it's very know. physical as well. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it not only mentally stimulates you, but, like, it physically it's my only cardio, it, baby. You know? <laughs> hey, I wouldn't do cardio if <laughs> it wasn't for that. Okay, so wing number eight is called the bomb. This yeah. is the... It's only 135,000 Scoville. But I promise you, this is the hottest one. Good to go. I don't know what makes it the hottest one, but this is the one that we're taking a trip and you can't once you hop on this train there's no getting off okay so here's it's this one you're on that one here's to the bomb dude and uh all right here we go this is it i'll see you on the other side okay this one starts really slow yeah and then it kicks up i remember okay is there anything that you do specifically to care for your dis your VA rated disabilities? Like, is there any, like how you paint, like does painting help with your mental health? Describe what you do on the healthcare side of the house, whether it's self-care or actual healthcare. <laughs> um, what do I do? Uh, 
the painting helps out mentally. Uh, the hiking helps out mentally. Um, I think my biggest thing is because one I'm of the other bust out the milk. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but one of the other portions to my uh, VA rating was bipolar, or is it? Yeah, like manic bipolar. Mm -hmm. Um, so like having open communication with Hannah, my spouse, talking with her like on a regular basis and helping her understand what that looks like for me. Um, damn, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> But like having her understand what that looks like for me helps out a lot, mm -hmm. honestly, because like, especially like when I'm in my manic periods, it's like, let me see. Can you describe that? What is yeah. manic bipolarism? So like, I'll have highs and lows, right? So like, let's say the week is split up and I have three days of highs, right? Then I'll have four <laughs> days of lows. Depending on how high those three days of highs are, will kind of reflect how low my low is but three days i may not sleep but i'll still feel fully energetic um i'm super talkative i have just tons and tons of energy that i don't know what to do um the thing is is whew, yeah that's hot but um the thing is is like in the marine corps like looking back i noticed it in the marine corps but i didn't know what it was you know um i like for instance I went to Hong Kong, right? I'm so paying attention to you. I'm just in my moment. Yeah, Hong Kong. But went to Hong Kong before it got turned back over to China. Um, and I think while I was there, I made like, like I promise you it was like 10 grand. But um, I was also in my manic period. So from day one to a week later when we left, I not only spent 10 grand on like just ma random miscellaneous things. I can't even tell you what it was on, but I maybe slept a total of six hours for that whole week. Not even joking. Um, this is a libo port. Yeah. Libo port. And like, it was just because like, like I said, like I was manic, but I didn't know. So I'm like, Oh, I just don't need to sleep. I'm just not tired. Meanwhile, like everybody else is crashing out on day three and I'm like, Oh, well, let me just go walk six miles in Hong Kong just to walk around. And I did it. Met some great people. Didn't understand them. They didn't understand me. But, like, we had a few drinks. Fun and dandy. But then the following week was probably one of my lowest periods. And I, I know that it has something to do with, like, the amount of sleep you get and stuff like that. You know, like, that plays a huge role. But, like, that following week, I slept a lot. Um, I was just, like, super depressed. I like felt like everything was like against me in that period, you know, like I can, you can get told all of these things like, no, I'm here. I'm here to love you and all of that yeah. stuff. But like, it's inside yourself, you know? So it's a lot harder to combat something that you can't touch. Um, but so to help combat those manic periods, me and her, we have very open communication. Um, she can kind of tell like when I'm getting there, because if I can't sleep, there's times where like, uh, there's times where like I'm falling asleep and like I know that I'm manic too during those time frames because I'll be falling asleep and I'm super exhausted. But, like as I'm falling asleep, it feels like my body is literally falling, and then like I get this whole jolt throughout my whole, my whole body and I'm like, well, can't sleep, and that's it. But like she knows like, all right, during those time periods, let me make sure that you know he has the things that he needs, he has his space, um, if he wants to talk, I'm here to talk. You know, and wait, go Hannah. Yeah, I mean, but like that's the thing is like go having, Hannah. yeah, like having yeah. somebody that you can rely on. Honestly, I mean, like that's one of the biggest things that we lose leaving the Marine Corps. Those people closest to you. You mm -hmm. know, you force us to live and eat and piss and shit with these people. You know, months at a time, and then one day I'm just not supposed to have them. You know. It's one thing to lose them because like, you know, like I lost you. I know I can't get that back, but like, it's another thing to move back across the country, mm -hmm. you know, back to your hometown and try to reintegrate with these people who have no clue what you've just been through, who won't take the time to come and see you when you're, you know, on leave, but still want to see you. You know, like it's all of these things compounded that like yeah. really throws us off and like messes us up. And then like losing those people to where like 
you could just talk to. You know, I remember being in a barracks, literally going over to one of my boys' room, talking to him for just a few minutes, you know, like just stopping by and saying what's up, <laughs> leaving. And then like pretty much I would do that frequently. And then one day, it was like two days before he got out. And he like pulled me to the side and he was like, hey, like just want to say like you helped me out a lot. And I was like, what you mean? He was like, there was a few times where like you just came into my room, like just popped in, saying yeah. what's up. And he was like, and I was like in a dark place. And he was like, and I'm like, I was like at that point. But like you just knocking and come in, coming in and just checking on me was like more than enough to like get me past that day. And like now you don't have that, you know, you live in an apartment by yourself or with with a roommate who you barely ever talk to. Like, who do you turn to then? You know, mm -hmm. like, yes, I know we have crisis hotlines and stuff like that, but like it's, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. And then it's a lot harder for us to accept that we have a problem. You know, it's a lot harder for us to look in the mirror and be like, hey, you need to get help. Yeah. There were several times when I talked with Hannah and was like, yeah, I'm going to seek therapy. And it was during my manic periods. But then as soon as that manic period's over, I'm like, oh, fuck therapy. I don't yeah. need that. That's stupid. You know, they don't know me. Why would I talk to them? They're just going to judge me, you know? So I think that that's the biggest thing is just communication with my partner. Yeah. I like how you said going back home and like assimilating back to society and your old friends. One thing that I realized, dude, and it's, it's a hard pill to swallow is I'll, I'll speak about me personally. My friends back at home in Louisville, Everyone I knew, they don't give a shit about... It's not that they don't care about you. But they have their own things. They have their own issues. You've been gone. We've essentially not been in their lives. And you're going back to a moment that was years ago. And you're trying to hold on to it. And they don't give a shit about what you've been through. They don't know either. Correct. And flip side too, we don't know... We don't yeah. know what they've been through, and that's because, like, during that time, my friends frame, are paycheck to paycheck, you yeah, know. Like, I mean, they're just living the struggle, but that's because, like, during that time frame, like, we all grow, you know. Four yeah. years is still a lot, people change a lot, and the Marine Corps happens to grab, or the military grabs all of us in those very defining moments in our life, yeah. you know. I've talked with Hannah about this so many times. Like, my time in the Marine Corps was like her time in college because. You know, she left the household to go to college and pursue, you know, a degree. She had to meet new friends, you know, live in a new area, adjust to that life. I did the same thing. I left the Marine or I left my hometown to go to school and become a new person. You know, I learned so many things during that time frame. I learned so many things about myself during that time frame. So, like, when I go home, I'm like, hey, so-and-so, you know, like, I knew you in high school. They're not the same person, mm -hmm. you know? They may have had a family now. They may have had 16 jobs, you know? They, hell, I grew up in Chicago. A lot of people I knew got arrested or shot. I don't know that life, yeah. you know? Like, we aren't the same people anymore, so how are we supposed to connect? But you are my tie back home. So, like, that's when it becomes, like, this weird relationship that you're trying to figure out. And during that time frame, I mean, like, your problems don't stop. Mm -hmm. Their problems don't stop. So, I mean, like, you just still kind of navigate away from each other. And that's why we rely on each other so much, yeah. you know? It's weird. It's a weird, um, you know, I always tell Betty that we never truly assimilate back into society. You just kind of learn how to live now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it gets, I would say it gets harder as time goes. Because when I was a one year out, I was like, ooh, I got it. It's easy. I figured it out. There's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> two years out, I was like, damn, I really didn't know anything, but now I feel good. Three years out was the same thing. Four years out, same thing. I'm about to hit my five year mark and leaving the Marine Corps. And damn, five. I've been out for five years, dude. Yeah. Five years, July 4th, Freedom Day. So well, I guess technically it would be July 5th, being my last day. But September, September 5th will be my six year yeah. mark. But you we never truly do come back to there is no going back. Correct. No. It's it's well shit, here's what I got. Here's how here's what it is now. But that's at least that's my two cents. Moving on to wing number nine. That shit was hot, bro. It was. It was it was super intense, but then like it, it faded. I like, am mildly lactose. As it started fading, like it became a lot smoother. It is it's a spicy smooth. Yeah. I'm mildly lactose. I'm just down the whole thermos of milk. 
So, <laughs> hey, let's rush. I got no more milk. <laughs> <laughs> let's rush through these wings for some okay, star bubbly. This is wing eight, which I'm sorry, wing nine, which is an alchemy wing. Apparently, you can mix things together and create like different breeds of peppers, mm. like you do dogs. Okay, man. This is called Watermelon Ghost. It is 641,000 Scoville. Watermelon the last Ghost. one was 135,000. This is 641,000. So, wish me luck. I'm doing a bite. <coughs> it's watermelon, though. So I'm gonna... Oh, yeah, it's watermelon. <laughs> it's of a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> well, did you die? I'm dying. Mm -hmm. Did you die? I'm dying. No. <laughs> Holy. <clears throat> what was your worst day in the Marine Corps? What was your absolute just worst day, dude? The absolute worst day in the Marine Corps. Um, I mean, it, like, it could be anything. It could be on deployment. It can be here back at home. It can be a field op. I mean, just when I, when I say what was your worst day, what what's the day that really stands out? Um, I mean, like there's a bunch, but like. I mean, wow. Not really worse for me. I mean, it, it depends, right? So, like, my physical worst day in the Marine Corps, like, physically, was I think when we did that 12 mile ruck for the Q course, that was like the worst physical day. It does suck. That's especially we're not used to rocking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not so hard. Um, mentally, uh, I'll probably have to say it was my last mew, the eleventh mew. Um, I think it was like not too long after Christmas because we came back like, I think like March, March or something like that. So it's not too long after Christmas, and everything's going good on the ship. Um, didn't take any casualties or anything like that. Like we were doing operations um, off the Goa or in the Goa uh, into places around there. Um, so like we took like a, a few injuries, but like nothing big. Um, and then <coughs> Christmas came, Christmas went, everybody was fine. And then I think like three days later, uh, one of the dudes in so he was he was S3, uh, we, which we worked closely with. And we like exchange words every now and again. Like nothing, you know, nothing big, but like everybody's cool with one another. Yeah. Um, so long story short, but like I, I'm heading up to the L Falk to do L Falk watch. It's like two o'clock in the morning. Um and I'm thinking to myself, like, oh damn, like I need to go to the bathroom. I could wait. Let me just go on Facebook really quick and check my messages. And then, like, I'll go bullshit for a bit. Uh, what I didn't know, I walked past the bathroom, went to the old fuck. And usually, like, right there at the first section of the old fuck, we have, like, the S3 comms right there doing their old fuck watch or whatever. But the room was empty, which is never, never the case, yeah. obviously. You know, you know the way this works. But the room was empty. So I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I wonder who the fuck was on watch. Don't think about it. Do my watch, go back, um, crashing out of my rack, and I get woken up. And they're like, hey, uh, we got an all hands meeting right now. Um, something just happened. So I'm like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. We go down there and we find out that uh, that dude, Corporal Brown, uh, he actually committed suicide in that same bathroom. Literally, as I walked past it, like he was in there hanging himself. Um, it sucks because like you know like you never want that to happen especially yeah. because of i mean like we're yeah we wasn't best friends but like we were still all close you know and like we was literally not too long before that talking about like when we hit home and stuff and he was talking about his girl you know so like we all thinking that everything cool but then like i guess some stuff that happened at home some personal stuff that like he just felt as though that was the best solution for him um unfortunately that was the case so i mean like it was a huge downer for the whole ship like got to meet his family and stuff um we watched him take off on a bird but like i mean it just goes to show like we never know what yeah, the next person is deal with unfortunately like <clears throat> yeah 
Yeah. Well, I say that that had to be the worst day only because like, I mean, like, yeah, we lose people, like I said, but like things have been going great, you know, and you only expect to lose people when things are in the shit. We weren't in the shit, you know, we was on ship. We was pretty much on our way home damn near. And it's weird because you still, you know, you still go back to work the next day. Yeah. And I mean, like, that's the thing too. It's like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go back to work the next day. Like as though it didn't just happen or like, you know, like they corned off the bathroom for 24 hours and then it was right back open. You know, and I'm like, imagine just taking, not to make a light situation, but like you got to take a shit. Right. But that was, but that was the thing is like, literally I'm like, you gotta I was, go shit in that I was getting you know? ready to walk into that bathroom. I was at the door and I was like, damn, let me just go check my messages. Because at that point I was like, yeah, I just want to see what my family on. I can come to the bathroom late, but I feel like if. There could have been a chance that it, I could have intervened, you know, and like that's the shitty part. Yeah, no, no, that definitely, damn, dude. Yeah. I'll transition <laughs> that to my worst day, which is a little different. It was my, I think, I want to say my, it wasn't my first field op in the fleet. When I hit the fleet, it sucked. Yeah, use artillery. Everyone thinks I was, uh, this was infantry. Mm-hmm. Um, I, everyone thinks boot camp sucks, which it does. Everyone thinks SOI sucks, which it does. When you hit the fleet, dude, at least in the infantry, that is when the fleet fucks. <laughs> you question your choices. You're like, what were the decisions that led me here? Seriously. Anyways, that's this whole thing. So did the fleet stuff on it was either my first or my second field op. We were at we were from Lejeune. We went to Bragg to do an 81 range. Mm. We were there for like three weeks. And it was just cold enough to not snow, so like 33 degrees. So it was miserable cold, and then it was raining. This is three weeks right here. Yeah. And um, we wake up probably like four or five in the morning. I can't remember, but we're in these stupid two-man tents. Everyone gets ready, and then the trucks show up. And there's a bunch of high backs, and there's one grenade bucket. I didn't know what the grenade bucket was at this point. Yeah. So I'm a boot in the fleet. So I go to the first Vic. It's full. And uh, uh, high back is, it's got something yeah, on it, the, right? The, the, oh, the Cause it's pouring down rain. It's pissing, dude. I'm talking like. Don't they have no hole like, in the Dude, I feel like we're in Vietnam, okay? <laughs> it's raining, raining. And um, went to the second Vic, that's full. Went to the third Vic, that's full. Went to the fourth Vic. And 81's is a huge section. There's like, I want to say 80 Marines in a section. 82. Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, or it's a lot. Anyways, um, which leads me to the back, and myself and this dude John K. He's from Boston. I hope he watches this. And then there were a few others. I don't remember them. I remember John K. Just because of his face and like we we made there was this moment of eye contact where we looked at each other, and no words were spoken, but we but just, everything was said. We yeah, <laughs> dude, we were in it. And what happened was it's pissing down, raining. We're in this grenade bucket. We're going to do Mount Town. And so you can't do warm. You don't wear warming layers right? Yeah. in the infantry, which is not many people know yeah. about that. Because you will overheat. You'll, you'll overheat, yeah. So I'm freezing fucking cold. I'm in my camis, my field camis, my flak. We got all of our stuff set up. I'm sitting in this grenade bucket. My hands are my flak like this, you know, and we, I and I don't have any, I don't even have the plate carriers at this point. We had the uh, the the big flak, the Iraq ones. What's it called? The you know what I'm talking. Yeah, I mean, the Iraq flak jacket yeah, that has the neck. The collar. neck collar on okay, it. Okay, yeah. the neck collar. We got those. Okay. Um, I'm sitting in here now. The neck thing does support your neck, so I'm down for that one. And you can kind of prop your Kevlar to where you don't have to use your neck muscles. Little wind, These are dude. the little winds. See, that's what I mean. But it's pouring down raining. It's freezing cold. And it turns out it's like a 40-minute drive up to Mount Town. And me and Kay and two other dudes are just in there. No one says a word. A word, dude, the whole way. And then me and him made eye contact. And we just... It was in that moment. I, I'm a private. You know, I wear nothing because I am nothing. I'm so yeah. private. Yeah. I'm not even a PFC, dude. It was in that moment... I was like, damn. <laughs> this is, and this is the start of it. That's the, take oh, the L, dude. 
So, so take the L, yeah, man. If we're, going to, if we're talking about that, then, but that right. like, but that moment wasn't just like a physical stress because it was cold and I'm like over here shivering. It was just a mental state of not being able to get out of that situation. There's only one way out, and that is a four-year contract, right? Oh, yeah. You know, my first day in the fleet. So we did graduation. I was at um, I was stationed at Camp Johnson for school, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got orders to Camp Lejeune. So uh, day of graduation, uh, they send over like some corporal or whatever, and he's like, "Be here this time." Good to go. So I had a car in the schoolhouse, which we wasn't supposed to, but whatever. I'm a grown man, <laughs> right? So <laughs> so. Uh, we have to meet at like 0400 at the shop, right? Or 04. So uh, pull up to the shop in PT gear. I think it was, I think it was like February, March time frame again, right? So it was kind of cold, right? I think it was closer to like 40. And I'm in PT gear, green on green, you know, with my shoes on. And they're like, I see like, this group of people gathered so i'm like i'm assuming that that's me like i don't know if i'm supposed to be like shut out I, I had no clue first day of the fleet you know yeah. i'm like i don't know so i'll go over there and first day who the fuck are you <laughs> oh man what am i getting into we did a, a 10 mile run i twisted my ankle on part of it and obviously first day of the fleet you can't be like oh you can't go to medical right. yeah so i twisted my ankle like three miles into it and then uh, one of the last corporals, one of the senior last corporals, came over and he was like, "Bitch, you falling out? <laughs> no last corporal, get the fuck out there, then." All right, last corporal. So that was my first. Time. That is, dude. Yeah. The fleet, man. Uh... They make sure you hate it first. That's the thing. It's wild. And then when a new group come in, you gotta make sure they hate it, and over and over again. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. All right, dude. We made it. Last wing here. All right, this is the Apollo. This is over two million Scoville. Okay, yeah, that last one wasn't as hot as the bomb by any means. Yeah, yeah, I see what you. Technically, mean. it is hotter, but I just think the bomb hits. Yeah, it just hits more intensely, uh, like super quick. Yeah. All right, here All we right, go. Let's get it. Last wing. I'm gonna take a bite. Instead of a question, there's a more of a rapid fire. Mm, I'm good gonna it. show you pictures on your Instagram account, and I want you oh, just man. explain it. Okay. Uh, two, you know, two, three, four sentences. What was going on? Some memories of that picture. Are you ready? Okay. And I'll go <laughs> ahead and show them up here. So, this picture here. Oh, that was my uh, last Marine Corps ball, my first unit in the Marine Corps. Man, I had just freshly got promoted as a sergeant not too long before that. So, I got to hang out with all the sergeants and BS. Okay. Okay. What about this here? Mm. That was the eleventh meal. Oh, uh, is is Freddie here? Yeah, Freddie's there. Is Araya in there? there? Nice. Yeah, I see Araya. We had a good group there. Like all the S three guys, like we were all super close. Ah, uh, okay. In this picture. Oh, um, that's me and Hannah. That's a while ago. Twenty twenty. Yeah, peak COVID. Uh, we actually met her parents at Long Bridge Park in Arlington. Because obviously, like you couldn't go indoors anywhere, so we met them at Long Bridge Park with uh, Quinn. Me and That's her, hot. Yeah, me and her we were in our. Can I get um, your milk? <laughs> we're in our Cubs jersey. Um, for them, a Cubs fan from Chicago, you know. So, yeah. <sighs> it was. I was not as hot though. I feel like the bomb. That's hot. Pushed me, so like now everything else is just kind of here, you know. And I was like, if I lasted the bomb, I'm like, I'll yeah. Last picture. What the heck's going on here? Oh, uh, that was at Whitlow's, which is closed now. Um, favorite place to go for Thirsty Thursdays and get $2 mugs and just party all night. It's like 3, 4 o'clock. So morning. are you blasted here? I'm pretty sure I was, yeah. High. Yeah, <laughs> I was high as hell. I mean, that's only using my edibles too. So Woo. I was having fun. I was, that's a, that's how you know that I was feeling good. Like whenever I was just sitting there chilling, mm -hmm. I'm feeling good. All right, that's it. You made it through the gauntlet of the wings. Thank you for coming to the show. And the floor is yours. Is there anything you want to promote or talk about or share with anyone watching right now? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, First off, thank you for having me. Um, great wings. So thank you, Lord, for that. Um, 
yeah so we have the break room coming out it's on our youtube channel salary transparent street uh pretty much it just helps give you a more in-depth breakdown or a panel discussion of jobs which you've also participated i was in. on it for the federal toy one correct correct so definitely check that out um and then yeah i bet check out the civ deal obviously like su like subscribe comment share and yeah that's it that's it dude appreciate it man there you go yeah